Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's third and final video. We're going to have a look at the weather for the next 10 to 14 days for today's final video. Day 10 will take us to the 18th of February and we'll be able to extend out beyond that with the extended GFS and ESAM ensembles because they run to around a couple of weeks. So we'll have a look at the CFS V2 at the end of the video for next four weeks. If that was enough, we will also have a look at the ECM WF seasonal model as well. And that's going to take us uh, through the spring and to summer. Can you believe that? So, uh, what about that at the end of the video? The first video is our uh, 6 cm upload. And we also uh, release the uh, ECM WF 30 days slash 6 weeks look at for the UK and the rest of Europe too. So please check out those two videos if you would like to do that. Thank you so much everybody for all of your left messages. Just say about uh, Mr. Beach being kept in hospital for a few more days. So she's still not quite well enough to get home. We are hoping to get her home though very, very soon. And when she does return to get out of this house, I will let you all know. But thank you so much everybody for all of the lovely, lovely comments that you've been sending in uh, since you've been poorly, and that was like two weeks ago today. Uh, right, okay, so uh, let's have a very quick look at central temperature then. Uh, CT is standing at 7.3 now, that is uh, 2.8 degrees above average. That is provisional to uh, yesterday, to the 7th of February. Uh, so let's tick down a little bit from yesterday. It's probably going to rise over the next couple of days because it's very mild today and will be tomorrow. I mean, it'll probably drop again a little bit at the end of the week as it will turn a little bit colder uh, at the end of the week. These are the GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles for the next uh, two weeks. The red line is the 30-year upper air temperature average for Birmingham. We're starting off very mild at the moment, of course. It's a cold snap, I just mentioned, at the end of the week. Then we go mild again into the weekend and the beginning of next week. And then just staying pretty close to the long-term average. But that does um, disguise quite a zonality going on. So uh, we've got warmer and cooler and warmer and cooler sectors alternating with one another. So we're probably going to a zonal spell as we get into the middle and second half of February. Precipitation-wise, uh, the dropping temperature around Bursley will be associated with some uh, wet weather. Um, and then into next week, it does look rather unsettled, actually. It does look as though we could get some quite wet weather through the third week of, uh, of February with the Atlantic powering up uh, a little bit. Two metre temperatures look like that. So starting off very mild, of course, at the moment. Becoming quite cold over the weekend, lifting it, or at the end of the week, lifting it up into the weekend. Um, and then just quite close to average again, not too far from average. But again, that does disguise like warmer and, uh, and cooler sectors and, and whatnot. So proper zonal sort of signal, really, as we get into um, the middle and second half of the month. And sorry, snow is concerned. There are some snow spikes coming through there into the second half uh, but February, maybe more than we've seen for a little while. So, bit of unsettled weather. This zone of weather might involve some cold zonality, which particularly brings light snow to more northern areas. Very good for Scottish ski resorts. Um, you tend not to see that much further south, but somewhere in elevation like Birmingham can get a little bit of snow from, uh, you know, from um, cold zonality. So there might be some uh, wintry showers at very least coming and going uh, around the middle part of the month. Temperature anomalies from the 8th to 16th of February are milder than average. Precipitation anomalies from the 8th to 16th of February are wetter than normal in most areas. The latest wind flow map from EarthNoldSchool.net looks like that. We're bringing up southwesterly winds uh, into the southern arm of the country. That's really so mild. But we are starting to try and pull in some cooler air from Greenland with these west to northwesterlies. And eventually these will push southeastwards across the whole country by uh, the second half of the week. So we see that very nicely with the uh, UK Met Euro chart for midnight on Friday, which is high pressure down to our southwest, and we're pulling in a cooler, maybe rather cold, northwesterly wind at that point. It uh, might be night frost overnight Friday into Saturday, which wouldn't normally be a talking point, but this winter probably is. And then as we get through into Saturday itself, we bring in some wetter and windy weather into the north and west. Uh, and that takes into a very unsettled weather over weekend into next week. This low pressure could bring a bit of a deluge uh, Sunday into Monday. Very wet and windy 
that area of low pressure and then into like a flat westerly northwesterly type flow so that brings wintry showers maybe into the north and west but wet weather will be mostly in the south i can't looking like this high pressure again to our southwest and pulling in this rather cool northwest wind on friday over weekend it turns more unsettled low pressure driving in off the atlantic bringing probably the most unsettled spell of weather that we've had through this winter I would have thought maybe I think it did have an unsettled spell at uh, one point during December, but we haven't had much in the way of genuine low pressure uh, sweeping in off the Atlantic. So it's probably most unsettled spell of weather so far this winter as we get into the early part of next week with uh, low pressure continues to drive in from off the Atlantic. That's as far as we get to with Icon to midday on the 15th of February, by which time the next low in the Atlantic is uh, waiting to start sweeping in from the west. The GFS midnight run, again, bringing in these uh, northwesterly winds on Friday. I mean, over weekend turns more unsettled, rather wet and windy, with uh, areas of low pressure and weather fronts being plenty of rain. Uh, into the into the following week, so this is Wednesday, 16th of February, week tomorrow, and again, uh, we're looking at cold zonality here, uh, what we call cold zonality, and, and so it's a zonal flow west to east, but the air is coming from quite a long way north around Greenland and pushing in to the UK and, and Ireland, so um, that could bring winchy showers, you know, into northern and western areas, and it's kind of pattern that does, you know, bow quite well for Scottish ski resorts, where you can get quite a lot of snow with this, on the Scottish mountains, over Pennines, Welsh mountains uh, as well, I mean, some flakes can fall to low levels in northern areas in particular, but never sustained because, of course, you've got the next low, so if I go back, um, never sustained because although we have this colder northwesterly zonal flow, cold zonality on the 16th of February, there's more low pressure in the Atlantic, and, and that pushes through by the 17th, uh, the next warm sector is coming in uh, ahead of this next low, and so that increases temperature, except across northern Scotland where it can still be quite cold in this pattern. Uh, up to day 10, uh, looking rather unsettled uh, once again. And then high pressure makes a bit of a move uh, with the GFS Midnight Run as we get from the 20th of February onwards, start to build in some higher pressure. That will turn us drier, uh, maybe with overnight frost. Although, by day, uh, with the strengthening February sunshine, probably reasonably mild. But, um, you know, frost and fog could begin to take over there uh, later on in February once more. GFS 6Z, again, looking very similar on Friday, uh, rather cool northwest is milder, wetter and windier over the weekend into the early part of next week, more, <coughs> excuse me, more low pressure driving in from off the Atlantic as we head up towards day 10. A little bit different at day 10, we start to bring up more of a southwesterly flow, so that turns very mild again. Uh, by day 10, before, again, the same idea, high pressure begins to build in across the country uh, around the 20th of February, turns us drier, but probably a little bit colder with overnight frost and fog, and that's how long as we get to the end of BGFS 6 z Again, everything's still driving in off the Atlantic, and still with this area of high pressure, we just can't get rid of it, so that area of high pressure to our southwest. Moving on to the GM, and if you're enjoying the video, then please do smash the like button, make sure you sub to the channel. Thank you so much, everybody, for doing that, and drop a comment, let us know what you this in all of our videos. Thank you so much. Um, right, GM, again, uh, bringing in that rather cool and showery northwesterly wind on Friday, over weekend, turning increasingly wet and windy, and uh, we carry on all the way up to day 10, looking very unsettled, heavy rain, strong winds at times, particularly more northern and western areas, but even in the south, there will be some wet weather coming in with this pattern. Um, and the ECM, uh, again, rather chilly northwesterly winds on Friday. Over weekend, more low pressure is coming in off the Atlantic, looking particularly stormy there around 16th of February. That area of low pressure, that looks properly wet and windy. And we just keep it going up to day 10, Friday 18th of February, still with these west northwest winds and still looking really unsettled with low pressure across much of northern Europe. This is the precipitation forecast based on that ECM run from Tometio.com. So, uh, you know, we've got unsettled weather coming and going, and particularly there uh, over weekend. Sunday could be a very wet day, actually, for England and Wales. You know, that it could be a real deluge on Sunday. And uh, after that, we go into more unsettled weather, rain particularly piling into western areas, but there will be some rain at times in the south. And um, that's how we finish up uh, by day 10th of the 18th of February, bring wintry showers into the northern half of the country. 
Uh, right then, so where are we? There, these are actually on the table. Within the Seven on Sunday for day four, day ten, which gets us to the 18th of February. Uh, via the Icelandic Met Office, uh, we have 15 members of the ECM ensemble, so lots of low pressure to the north and high pressure into the south, and that brings in this strong westerly flow. It could be a little bit chilly, especially for, for more northern areas. 14, just here, very similar, but perhaps a little bit stronger with the low pressure sending the jet stream that bit further southwards. 11, again, low pressure to the north and west, bringing those winds to the southwest. That's a bit more influence of high pressure to the south. Um, we've got six here again, deep low pressure up to the northwest, bringing west northwesterlies, uh, and then five with low pressure more or less over country slightly to our west. So they all look pretty unsettled, those options, don't they? Uh, day 10. So uh, next week is going to be more unsettled and, you know, will be quite wet, maybe even storming at times. Might even get a name storm uh, next week. I would not rule that out. In two weeks' time, uh, these are the options that we've got. This will get the 23rd of February. 20 members of the ECM ensemble still with low pressure to our north and northeast and still bringing those winds from like a west and northwest direction. 13 with a ridge building over top of the country. That's turning drier. Could be some overnight frost with that, of course. 11 with high pressure, more to our south, low pressure to our west northwest. And that's going to be bringing up wind from like a west or southwest direction. And then seven with high pressure out to the west and ridging northwards, low pressure to the east. And winds with that are going to be coming in from more of a north or northeast direction. So that's probably the driest and coldest option, but only seven doing that. However, if you put all the options together, because I mean the 13 here aren't that far away from that, and this, the 11 here are not getting all that far away. So it does look like the trend by the time you get through to the end of the third week of February. And into the final week of February, actually, as it's like a shorter month. So by the 23rd of February, of course, we are into the final week of the month. Um, by then, we could be starting to see a transition back towards higher pressure. Uh, CFS V2 looks like this. These are 500 millibar heights breaking down into week periods. The first week period takes from the 8th to the 14th of February. The coming week has high pressure to the south, low pressure to the north, and we bring up the winds from a west or a southwesterly direction. That will be mild. Here, week 2 looks much milder. This is, looks much more unsettled, I should say. This is the 15th, 21st of February, with deep low pressure around Greenland and Iceland, and bringing a strong flow from off the Atlantic. So that's a lot more unsettled into uh, week two. Week three will be the 22nd, 28th of February. Again, low pressure around Iceland and Greenland, high pressure around Spain out into the Atlantic. Winds are in from the west once again. Still unsettled, particularly more northern areas, not as unsettled in the south. And then all is by week four, which is the 1st of the 7th of March, the first week of March, March goes to high pressure, turning mainly dry and would be spring like. The jet stream is away to the northwest. The sun, you know, in early March is going to be strengthening rapidly. Um, though probably, you know, it could be frost and fog by night, but by day you would expect quite a lot of uh, pleasantly dry, sunny, and uh, reasonably mild weather. Right, before we go, I said we'd have a look at the ECMWF for the next few months, so let's just do that, shall we? Uh, so these are the mean sea level pressure anomalies from ECMWF.at for, uh, for the next few months, starting with uh, March, April and May. So this is spring 2022. ECM is forecasting an anticyclonic spring after an anticyclonic um, autumn and an anticyclonic winter. Have an anticyclonic spring too. Low pressure remains to the north. High pressure to the south. Jet streams up there. Looks like a very pleasant spring, really. I would expect a lot of dry and uh, pretty warm weather with that. So starting off still with a pattern that we're in. Uh, April, May, June looks like this. Still with anticyclonic signals. So again, high pressure is very much in the ascendancy over the top of the country. Bringing again plenty of uh, dry weather, you would have thought even into the latter part of the spring. May, June, July looks like that. High pressure begins to weaken, so we head towards the summer months. And the high pressure is still there a little bit to our west, but it's definitely weakening a lot, and looks like it's beginning to try and push it up towards Greenland. Starting to sound alarm bells, <laughs> perhaps. And then we get through to June, July, and August, and the high pressure seems to be gone. Uh, at that point, to be honest. So, um, you know, we still have a little bit of high pressure around Greenland. There's a trough of low pressure 
That's across the North East Europe. We're a long way away. You know, this is this is summer. This is June, July, August, summer 2022. So this is a long way out. But I think we see like a trend there for a definite weakening of the high pressure, which isn't. If you want to find something, it's not ideal. You know, you don't really want all the high pressure in autumn, winter, and uh, spring, and then it goes away as you get through into uh, summer. I'll tell you what, I'll just pause the video and have a quick look at the 500 millibar heights as well. Why not? Okay, so here we go. Let's just have a quick look at the 500 millibar height anomaly, uh, and then we will be done. Thank you so much, everybody, for uh, watching this video. If you enjoyed it, then please can you uh, like, share, and subscribe. Thank you so much to all of you. Right, this is the 500 millibar height anomaly from the ECMWF season model for the spring. Again, we see the above average heights very much dominating across West Europe. High pressure is in control. Low pressure is away to the northwest. So plenty of dry weather to come in the spring with a proper anti-cyclonic signal. Um, then you go through to April, May, June, and we look like that. So again, the 500 millibar high coming shows above average heights over, but this time a little bit more to the west of the country, but still with an anti-cyclonic signal. So, so you know, you know, the next few months are definitely going to be anti-cyclonic if this is correct. Now, let's see what happens through May, June, July. And we see that the above average heights then are sort of pulling out to our west and going northwards. Below, well, not below average height, but near normal heights developing over here. Does look as though the high pressure is beginning to sort of weaken and probably push away to the north and west a little bit as well. And then this is uh, June, July, August. This is uh, the summer itself with, uh, again, a hint, I think, of below average heights here. This white area will probably fill up with a trough of low pressure in the end. And I think the above average heights definitely sort of weakening. Because it's summer, so uh, heights are going to be generally higher in the Northern Hemisphere in summer anyway. But I think we still see that indication there that there's like a deterioration of the pattern going on into the summer. And uh, and so after all of the high pressure over the previous months and for the coming months, if this is right, into the spring, we possibly see indications here that we start to turn more unsettled as we get in towards the summer. Oh, let me just answer the phone. Okay, right, phone answer. Sorry about that, everybody. Uh, phone answer. So uh, that's it. Yeah, it does also, we might get a bit of a deterioration from this high pressure towards lower pressure into uh, the summer, which won't be the news that people, a lot of people want to hear. But there we go. That's what the ECM is hinting at uh, this month. Of course, it's all a very long way out. And any forecast beyond five, seven days comes with big health warnings attached. Right then, uh, so we're done with today's videos. If you've enjoyed today's content, then please can you uh, like, share, and subscribe. Thank you so much, everybody, for doing that. Don't forget to tell your friends and family about Gals Lovers. Get them to subscribe as well. It's amazing and it's incredible. And thank you so much. Uh, right, well, that's it then. Uh, so just to, coming up tomorrow, uh, we're going to have the uh, 6 a.m. upload. We'll have the USA forecast and a 10 to 14 day as well. So uh, more tomorrow. But for today's videos, that's all for now. And thanks for watching.